I've shared a whole series of this before, so I'll hit the tetrapod. Some things is good to, to review because we learn by repetition. Amen. So let's prepare to. subject and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, faith and belief is what I want to you know, draw your attention to. Uh, like I said, I did a series uh, a couple of years ago on it where I spent a good bit of time. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit, refresh, review, you know, and rehearse and get a few things. Uh, let's pull from uh, my, one of my favorite scriptures. Is I have a few of them. This is one of them. You've heard me say it often. Before. So let's pull from Mark chapter 9 and we'll, we'll cover this. Uh, it'll be reviewed for some of you. Now, this is the story, of course, and you can read the preceding verses that will have put you into the story of a young man whose well, son had been sick or dealing with seizures and different other things. And he took the, his, his son to the disciples uh, who had been given the power. God to heal and to rebuke and to cast out devils and so forth and so on. Uh, Jesus had given that authority and power to go forth and he sent them out, you know, two by two and three and so forth. And of course, you know, different translations in other places, other gospels that I think pick up on the same story said that if you go to a place that doesn't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and go on and be a testimony against them in the church, but you continue to be this, uh, discouraged or swayed because the message, your message will not be received by all. Amen. Amen. Uh, say what you say and then move on about your business. Amen. Amen. That's, that's why I'm not of the uh, mindset to try to make anybody receive or believe anything. We don't trample on people's conscious uh, minds and, and, and rights. Amen. Amen. And so we present and we move on. So Jesus saying, you know, give this message to them, but if they don't receive you, you know, amen. 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 And so we move on. This is where uh, the young man is now coming back to Jesus, asking him for help. And he said, I took uh, my son to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. So, you know, if there's anything that you can do, please have compassion on me. That's what we get to verse 23. So Jesus said to him, the Father, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, I'm going to re repeat some things, but I'm going to just talk a little bit right here. It's good to just talk a little bit. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, I know he's, he's, he's addressing the young, the, the father here, but it, it's a statement that is applicable to all, I think, in any of life situations. So we'll read it one more time. If you can believe, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Yes, Immediately the father of the child cried out. And I want you to see this. Can you imagine this right here? Because he's pleading for his son. So I want you to get the picture of that. He cried out and said with tears. Get that picture in your mind. Get that picture. So I don't think any of us would be any different when it came when it comes to our child or children. We, we read over that, but you know, I admonish this father from going through every extreme. I'd also admonish him from not stopping because he didn't get the the, the results that he wanted. Because many of us would get discouraged yes. and go on back home. When we knew that the disciples had the power to perform these, this miracle and they couldn't do it, 
I admonished the young man because he did not stop there. But he stayed in a spirit of perseverance. And oftentimes we miss God because we don't stay on the path long enough to get to the place or the person that God initially is trying to get us to. We're so easily discouraged and a lot of times the first no sends us in a tumble or a spiral down like that's the end when it was only one person's view, position, or weakness. You got, you know, if you know that God has anointed you for something or promised you something, you got to stay, you got to stay at this thing. You got to stay at it. You got to stick with it. You know, and I'm going to address that a little bit more. So I admonish him for not becoming so discouraged because he didn't get the results right off the bat at first, but he stayed in it. As a matter of fact, he said, okay, you all couldn't do it. I'm going to take my son to Jesus. I'm going to another. I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to another. And, and he pleads. And so he's now, I know he's shaken. And so he cries out and said with tears, think about this running down his cheek, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. How do you believe and unbelieve at the same time? You know, and I've shared this years ago, so this is a good day to talk about this again. How do you both believe and unbelieve? Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes, Lord. So we use faith and belief synonymously, and that, that, that it is true, and it does work in context. It isn't, like many other things, it's interchangeable. But there's also some, some variations and distinctions that helped to clarify the statement that he was making. And I put it up here, getting on the same page. I'm talking about your faith and your belief. Or let me put it another way that I always put it. Getting your heart and mind on the same page. Getting your heart and mind on the same page. I just feel like talking about this today. Come out. Because oftentimes, there's a lot of things we know in our heart. How do I put this? But either you will rationalize what you know in your heart, you will rationalize and reason right out of your spirit. Or you can know something in your heart. Listen to me. And you allow people to talk you out of what you know in your heart. Oftentimes, our struggle, though our greatest struggle, as far as I'm concerned, is, is when our heart knows something, but our mind can't conceive it or receive it or we are shaken in, in mind. You know, the, the, the heart and the spirit are not on the same page. And I believe this, I want you to hear me, that this is the double-minded man that James was talking about. It is, it's, it's, it's when the heart and the mind are not in agreement. So it creates an inner turmoil, turmoil and conflict within. And so God has spoken to us and said things, and there's some things that we we intuitively know inside. We just have an inner knowing. But we don't have the necessary evidence, and we can't prove the point. But there's an unction in your spirit. There's an inner knowing. And really, I always, I think what, what our um, elders would call that the first mind. And I think this is what they were talking about, and I do agree with that if you follow your first mind. That's the initial unction. You'll never go wrong. But oftentimes, when we hesitate to act and to move, then another spirit of conversation and play and rationalization and reason come into play and people who come into play and then you talk about what you know God said and people will, will put you in a position of questioning 
what you know in your heart and you end up abandoning that initial unction that you had and you end up years later realize I knew it in my spirit but I didn't follow my, my initial unction. Come on, I know somebody, come, thank you, Brother Gene. I know I'm talking to somebody here. Uh, you know, this is this conversation. And if we were to follow that initial unction, follow that first mind, hallelujah, we wouldn't have never missed it. I think that's the all-knowing part of us. I think that's the, the voice of the spirit that is always present in everything we do, but we disregard it. We don't listen to it or we look for evidence. And sometimes the evidence will come later. Yeah. The, the only evidence you have is, is a gut feeling, yeah. an unction on the inside, an yeah. instinct. I just, I can't explain it. I, I can't tell you why. I don't have sufficient proof, but I just have a feeling down in my heart. I got a feeling to the core of my bone of being. And a lot of times, you know, we, we, people, even in church, we will teach you to disregard this as emotional, but it isn't. Well, emotions are involved because when you are operating under the inspiration of the Spirit, your whole body feels the power and the weight of, of the Word of God that's moving on the inside of you. Your whole body is responding and reacting. It's, it's that good feeling. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord.